You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live. Stand up, sit down. Featuring in-depth discussion and interviews with stand-up comedians on the art of stand-up comedy. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live, stand up, sit down. All right. How you guys doing? Welcome to another exciting episode of Stand Up Sit Down. I'm your host, Nick Perdue, and I'm here joined by the hilarious Damar Randy. How you doing, man? What up? What up? How are you? Good to see you. I'm chilling, homie. What's up, dog? I'm good. I'm good. I haven't seen you for, for a while. You know, you're doing your, your thing. Yeah, I'm grinding, man. How you been? I'm I'm good, man. I'm I'm, I'm happier than I've ever been, man. I'm, I'm... It's good. I can see the light. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can see the light. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm like, okay, now I can really get my tunnel vision down because, like, you know, I, I can kind of see where where this is going now. There you go. There yeah. you go. So, you know, you are a L.A. native, right? Compton. Yeah. Compton bred. Yes, yeah, sir. Right? What, what was that like? What was it like growing up in, you know, what some people will say is probably one of the roughest cities in America? What's it like? I think it is a character building, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It built, it built, it gave me everything I need to be good at what I do now. Mm. Without, without that, I can't, I, I can't be this person here. You know, and so I, I like the nose, the violence, the rejection. You know, the, the discrimination, the love. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The togetherness, the community, all of that shit plays into into what makes up Demar Randy. So without, without that, then. I, I don't know who I'd be, you know? Yeah. So I I, I love Compton. <laughs> a lot of people want to leave, but I, I want to come back and help everybody, so. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody want to the hood, you know? Everybody want to leave the hood, but I just want to come back and help everybody out, you know? I got survivor's remorse, you know? <laughs> I made it! <laughs> I'm still here, guys. I'm still here. That's funny. But now, okay, so growing up, were you the the funny guy, you know, like in, in school? Were you the funny guy in the hood? Like people always knew DeMar had a joke for him? No. no. I only I was only funny around my 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 my, my friends and family. Okay. But like with strangers, I kinda I kinda like I turned down a little bit, you know. Mm. And I turned to like the observer and I'm just watching, you know, just watching. But you know, with my family, I'm hilarious. You know, they ask me, they be like, "Tell that story when, uh, when tell that time, tell that story, tell that story." I, I'm good for telling telling that story. That's what I do. You know. So kind of like, is that how you evolved into telling jokes on stage? It's just like a whole bunch of bunch of stories that you kind of whittled down in into jokes. Well, yeah, that's no. Well, there's some some of the stuff, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's not how I came into stand up, but that's how that's one of the ways that I approach stand up is with that with that in mind, you know, like taking taking like real true stuff mm. and then turning it into you know translating it first because you know I come from Compton and my life is a lot different, so I first have to recognize the story that is an interesting story, then yeah. then translate it into mainstream you know um, American English. So that everybody can understand. So you know, there's a couple of process. You know, it's got to it's got to go through a couple of filters first. Be, and, it, and it still sounds like it's unfiltered, but it's it's been trust me, it's been filtered. You know, okay, it's been it's still been filtered, even though they they still cringe and it's still <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they still yeah. cringe, but they, I I didn't I, I I took my foot off the gas on some of those. You know what I'm saying? So there's a there's a method to to your to your madness basically is what you're saying. Yeah, man, I love it. I, I'm like the I like the, the the symphony of 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 emotions that I you know I become the conductor. I mean, you might feel happy, you might feel sad, and then you know we laughing the whole time though. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. But now let me ask you this: Have you ever used comedy to get you out of you know sticky situations? <laughs> I do it all the time. Are you <laughs> That's how I. That's how I'm still alive. I, my whole life in a sticky situation. <laughs> that's a, shit. Yeah, I use it all the time. I, just recently, I was. I didn't pay for the train. I didn't pay for the metro train, and they, uh, the lady stopped me, and I was like, she was like, "Why? Well, I'm about to write you a ticket." I'm like, "Man, I make people laugh every day. I change people's lives every day. I take people who have had depressing days, and I make them smile, and they haven't smiled in years." Mm. You're about to take away my smile with this stupid ticket. Can you help a brother out? She's like, You're funny! <laughs> <laughs> 
Did she? Did she write the thing? No, she no, she didn't. Okay. She, women cannot resist a funny man. It's not. It's just. It's just hard for them to do. That's true. They can't. Do, and if you happen to be somewhat good looking and you're funny, it's the world's yours. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if you can make a woman laugh, you can make her do anything. That's mm. very true. That's <laughs> very true. Because <laughs> I, I know, I know a lot of people who have laughed them way into some pussy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's comic hot. Right. Yeah, it's comic hot. You right. know, yeah, comedian hot. You know, it's a total, it's like rock star. It's like a rock star or anybody else. You know, once you have a talent, then you become, you know, much more sexy once. That's true. Yeah, you kill That's in front true. of a chick, you know what I'm saying? She's yeah, you know, she she on stage doing your your thing, you know, the lights is on, the you know, people. On. Yeah, they're like, okay, I'm gonna get him some. I'm gonna go ahead and get him some. You're so funny. <laughs> oh my god, you're so funny. <laughs> But the only thing about that is because, like, comedians, we really don't have groupies like rock stars do. Because, you know, rock stars have groupies, like, lined up, you know. Comedians, unless you're, like, Kevin Hart or, or somebody, you know, selling out Madison Square Garden, you really don't have, you know, top shelf groupies. Top shelf groupies, no. But you have something better, which is the bottom shelf groupies, which are way more experimental. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do you have a uh, groupie story? Uh, nope. No. No. Nope. You don't. You don't. You don't have anything. No, nope, I don't kiss and tell. No, I mean you know. I don't I mean, kiss. Yeah. If I've, she's bottom shelf, huh? you know, if she's bottom shelf, she may not even have the internet to even watch it. So you know, you could go ahead. <laughs> you know, if her name's Melissa or Sally or something, you know, you can. No, no, no I, you know I do have interesting stories, but I can't, I can't, I can't say them because you know that'll mess up my future. <laughs> you know I can't allow you to mess up my future. You know what I'm saying? The one thing you don't do is talk bad about hoes. You talk bad about the good girls. The hoes is gonna make make this all worth it. You know what I'm saying? The okay. hoes make it all worth it. We show up to the club and then she she do whatever she do. You know when she do it. You know you want that to continue to happen. You don't want no chick getting you know. Fearing that you might tell the uh, hoes getting mad. At yeah, you, I don't want right? the hoes mad. I can keep the, the good girls can be mad all they want to, but <laughs> I'm gonna keep the hoes happy. <laughs> is it is is it hard to make thugs laugh? No, no. It's hard if you don't have if you don't have the that thing in you that allows you to be totally free and open and and, and cool with with being you in mm. front of anybody. Mm. They can they'll laugh if you if you you and you don't have to be hard. Mm. You just they, they just like a motherfucker that's them and that, like they know that's they you know he knows that that's you every day. Yeah, and like so you're not putting on a front. So yeah. like you on stage is who you are on stage. Right, it's just who you are just in your everyday life. Well, not for the for the most part. I mean, not no no that's not fair because you know on, on stage I have you know there's certain pieces of me that I reveal and there's mm. other pieces that you know I hold I hold I hold to myself you know but. I'm so open on every a lot of stuff that you know I, I hold some stuff for me, you know. Okay, so let's let's talk about your first show. Okay. What was your first show like? Where was it? How long did you do? First, the first show was uh, was uh, Cliff Cliff from Lewis Entertainment. He, okay. he gave me uh, he gave me my first try, and and he paid me. Oh wow! And I and I sucked. Well, <laughs> here's the thing, I. I I don't think I sucked that bad, but I sucked it. I sucked bad for having done my, that was my first show. And mm. usually I had my friends and family on the ground rolling. So I wasn't even used to polite laughter then. You know, yeah. I didn't know what polite laughter was, like a the public laugh. You know, so I was like, damn, these motherfuckers ain't all the... Like, know, this is yeah, funny. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. like, this is, y'all should be falling on the ground, rolling around, and you get back up, and then I tell you another one. And I'm like, they ain't do, they wasn't doing that. So for me, I took it as a bomb. I didn't really bomb, but I took it as a bomb because it mm. wasn't what I was used to, and I didn't have the confidence to work through silence. Gotcha. I didn't have the confidence to have the, I didn't have the control of the crowd for the type of material that I wanted to do. Mm. So you know, I grew into my material. My material was always my material and the stuff that I do has always been there. It was the, I had to grow into. I had to grow into my stuff. Okay, so if if a joke doesn't work. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you still fully commit on the on that joke, or do you bail on it and say, "Okay, let me try and get them with this"? No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't bail on any. I don't bail on any. I don't bail on anything. So you you fully commit, even if like you're like, "Yo, this is not working at all." You still commit all the way through. Man, I ain't, I, I had that problem. Man. They go with it. Like, if I if I, I sell I sell 
You know what I'm saying? Whatever I do, if I give it to them, they're going to eat it. You know, like, because okay. I give, I ain't going to bring you nothing that I don't think is hilarious. Mm. And crowds have, have given me the, the, the confidence to understand that everything I think is funny, they're going to think it's funny. Mm. It's just about how confident I can give it to them and if I'm spelling it all out, spelling it all out properly, you know? So they're giving me enough confidence to where I don't like, I don't, I don't question it. I'm just like, yo, this, this is what we're doing today, right here, boom. This is what's on the menu. It's just like cafeteria food. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is what's on the menu. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want that, then uh, you're free to starve until the next day, the next meal pops out. Okay, so what what was your best show like? <sighs> the best show. The best show. That was the 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 one at the Cal State Northridge. Okay, tell me about that one. That was... Okay, here's... I'm a, it's a story though. It's a, it has a whole story to it, but people, I have a certain process that I work my comedy through. Mm -hmm. And there was other comedians who was telling, who told me that my process, you know, it wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. They're like that. That doesn't work. You know, like I'm, I'm at Marty's all the time. Mm -hmm. I work on my stuff all the time. So they were like, "Man, you got to get out of Marty's, man." I'm like, "Nah, nah, 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 nah. I, I know what I'm doing right here." And so they're like, "Man, you, man, we're gonna, we're gonna show you, man. So we're gonna book you on this. We're gonna book you on this thing just so you can see." Just so you can see, we're gonna book you at the Cal State Northridge. Just so you can see, mm -hmm. right? I'm like, all right, man, we're, we're gonna see. We're gonna test it. We're gonna test. We're gonna see who's, yeah. who's works. And I get there. I'm nervous as hell. I'm always nervous. You know, anytime, anytime before a show, man, I be my, my stomach hurt. Yeah. You know, I did crack him up last night. I took a shit right before. <laughs> like I was, I was like, I was like flushing the toilet as as uh, Tony Baker was calling my name. <laughs> he said in my name. He had to say my name twice because that, uh, that's where I was coming from. So I get real nervous inside right before the, the set. But you know that's 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 good though because I, I believe it was Chris Rock who said like if if you don't get nervous before a show, then it means that you don't really care about it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like no matter how long you've been doing it, if you still get nervous, still like get that you get those pre-show jitters. Yeah, that means that you still legitimately care. Yeah, I do. I, you know? I, I do. I do. I do legitimately care, but. I don't care about what how they feel about it, but I just I just it's just the the adrenaline of going up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. And the fact that I usually don't know what I'm gonna say until I say it. Mm. So then I'm like, I'm I have no I have nothing to, to give me confidence that I'm gonna have a good set until the set is done. Oh wow. So I'm not like, oh I got this I can do and I got this I can do. I do have that, but I don't have that I don't I don't use that as confidence. So I'm really kinda right before the set, I'm like, you, you can tell me I'm a piece of shit, I'll probably believe you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like you can fuck my whole shit up if you talk to me right before my set, you know. But that's why I don't let people talk to me right before my set. You know, I get it, get my zone. Bro. So, so you were at you're at Cal State Northridge, right? And so, okay, so it's a mixed crowd, mm -hmm. mixed crowd. I, it was about maybe like three, four hundred people in there. I do Marty's, which is like maybe like four or five people in there max. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I go, oh, all right. So he called my, they call, they finally call me up, and um, I had all this nervous energy, and the, and the, I just. I go into attack mode when I feel scared. When mm -hmm. I feel scared or I have fear, I, I attack it. So, okay. so as soon as I, as soon as I, they call my name and I come up, he's like, "All right, Demar Randy," and I was just like, "Boom!" I hit him with, I hit him with some uh, reversal of slavery. Just, and this is like a mixed crowd. And uh -huh. I see the black dudes over here. They start falling out their seats, and they was amping me up. And I just kept, I just kept going. I, I think I, ended, I got like three, four uh, applause breaks, and then at the end of it, it was like a standing up, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you get a standing ovation. <laughs> I yeah. thought that was pretty cool, you know? Yeah. So that yeah, was probably one of my best shows, but, you know, I had some good, I had some good small ones where I, I was proud of myself for, mm. for some of the things I tried. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we did good today. What about a worse show? I think the worst one was probably the the first one. The first one was, was was the worst one. Yeah, that's the one that made me question everything. You know, I was like, okay, is this for you? Yeah. No, is this is this for you? I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, you gonna have to be prepared to suck for a while based off of what we just saw. <laughs> yeah, and I'm talk I talk to myself like this. I'm like, you gonna suck for a while? You you, you we saw what just happened there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you not gonna you not gonna cover this comedy thing like uh like the like the uh, uh, first round draft pick. You right. know you go you gonna have to work your way through the farm system. Is that something you want to do, son? <laughs> I had to have that kind of conversation with myself. I'm like, all right, well, you know what I'm saying we. We can work out at the uh, farm system and see what happens. You know? <laughs> so speaking of working out, right? Writing, you know, this is what comics do. So how often do you do you write, and like, what is your writing style like? Wow, when you say write, I, like, okay, I, I write 
every minute. Mm-hmm. Every, I, you know, if I, as soon as something that, that strikes me as funny, I'm writing. Mm-hmm. If I see something in a conversation or something and I see it and it's funny, I'm writing in my head. Now, I can finish having this conversation, but I'm still writing the bit in my head, you mm-hmm. know. Because that's how, that's how I write, you know. I but have different processes. You don't physically write anything down? Maybe, maybe, maybe just a, um, like a, a bullet point. Mm-hmm. Just like, okay, well, this is. This is the uh, just express your thought on this particular s- topic, and and I don't have to write it down because it comes from my heart. It's gonna mm-hmm. be it's gonna be the same every time. It's gonna be slightly different based off of where wherever I'm at in the room, just to kind of give it a newness. But it's still mm-hmm. it's still you know it's just my opinion on whatever it is. So I, you can just line up a whole page of topics, and I'll have and you'll just go, yeah I'll just go, I'll, go yeah down yeah, the yeah line, I, I can just go down the line. You say okay, give me your opinion on this. And I'll you know I'll go until I until I got nothing else, and then I'll be like, all right, well that was what was that thirty minutes worth of uh, worth of kids stuff, you know, just talking mm-hmm. about kids, you know, and I don't even have any kids. I just so I okay. Got now, then do you, do you have like a like a closer that you always go to, or is it just something new every time? It's some it's something new every time, cause cause all my all my bits are written as an opener and a closer. No matter where where they, where they at in my set, they can open or close my set. So. I write. That's how I write. So you know, I can. Get, I, I mean, even in the middle of a bit, I could get out of it. Mm. I can close. Last night, last night, um, we was in the back, and Tony Baker, he's the host of Cracking Up Thursdays. Right. Shout out to Tony. And he was like, uh, he was like, man, everybody keep running the light. Everybody keep running the light. Everybody. And I was like, yeah. oh, I was like, okay, I don't run the light. Yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want Tony to get upset. Right, you know right. What I mean? I was like, all right. So I'm doing, I'm in my bed. I'm getting I'm getting down and I'm in the middle of I'm in the middle of this big energy bit, right? I'm like right in the middle of it and I see the light come on and I was like, Thank you, I'm Demar Randy. You guys have a nice night. I got a GED, peace. And, uh, everybody's like And Tony's like, Yeah hey! <laughs> <laughs> The only person happy in the room that night was, was, was Tony. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody else was like, Keep going. I was like, nah, nah, this is Tony room. I want to respect it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, especially if you want to come back. Yeah, you know. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I jump off. If the light come on, I jump off. That just, that just mean they got to give me more time next time, you know? Mm-hmm. Next time, like, okay, well, we, you know, that was our fault. We messed up. We could have, next time, we're going to have to give them a little more time because I want to hear the rest of that. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I, and, and, and it's still what it is because I feel that, like, you know, especially comedians running the light, you know, like, it's, it's an annoyance, and it's like one. If you're good, if you're funny, I get it. But especially, or or if you're having a great set, okay, cool. But like, finish up this last one. You saw the light. Just finish it up. Yeah. Walk off. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you're not doing well, yeah, you can't try and resurrect this set in the last thirty seconds, and that thirty seconds gets drawn out like yeah. three minutes. It's like just get off the stage. Yeah, yeah, give it up. Yeah, but I, 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 I if, even if I'm having a good set, I'm just as soon as the light going because. You know, I, I worked around, I worked in comedy clubs and stuff like that. So the worst thing you can happen is somebody running the light, yeah. throwing off the whole timing of the club, not yeah. just, not just the the, uh, not just the show, but the club. You know, because now you on stage running the light, that costs them to p- paying the employees in there to sit around and wait for you to finish getting off stage. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, they might be making more money, but everybody who work at who does comedy that's an employee there, they ready to go home. They don't care how funny you are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we we saw you last week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we saw you last week. You're funny, but these people, these people right here, you know, yeah, they're laughing and giggling. But just wrap it up. You, you got plenty more chances to get up here and rock out. But don't force nobody to hear you when they when they give you the light. You know, yeah, because yeah. that's the person who's gonna put you back up again. And you know, at least at least not when you bit and until you big. You know. And so you can you know, you can do stuff like that, you know. Well, you, I mean, uh, but, but then also do I feel like that there's a there's a certain respect factor too, you know, because it's like if if you're like a name like Chappelle or, or Rock or whatever, and you you come through, you're probably bumping somebody one, right? You know, and then so if you're bumping somebody, and then you say okay, like I'm gonna do like ten, that ten turns into like fifteen or twenty. Yeah. I mean, like okay, like I get that, but then still too, like if you're going up in the middle of the show, yeah, like there's still like another half a show left. You know what I mean? So like you don't want to be that that dick that comes in now. And bumps fucking comics, and then they get mad because you're, you know what I mean. It's like yeah, that's yeah, yeah, you know yeah, you don't yeah. want to be that guy. Nah, I, I, I keep it. I like to keep it short, you know, just because I sat and watched how much uh, you know I hated everybody else. Yeah, that, so. yeah. So I, yeah. Gonna, I, I, I might I might flex every now and then, but it won't be nothing, you know. 
Yeah, anything That's crazy. Me. Nah, yeah. yeah. Right. Like, yeah. The most I can flex right now is I can go to any comedy club and kind of flex my way on stage, but I'm just, I can't flex past any celebrities, you know? Yeah. I can't flex, yeah. you know, any past any celebrities, you know? Move Kevin Hart over. Sorry, right, right, Kevin. Right, hey, yeah, yeah you know, but you know, I can get, I can, you know, I can flex a few, you know, a few places, but I don't, I still don't do it, you know? Because mm. it's like, for what? You know, like, you know, they I mean, had a show already. But now, let me, let me just two things, because I know, you know, there's a difference between, like, white rooms and black rooms, you know? like there's, Is there? I mean, like, because I, I, there, there are some jokes that work really well in white rooms, and there's some jokes that work really well in black rooms. Like, do you see a, do you see a, a difference, and do you like change jokes up, or is it just? Nah, I'm doing Demar everywhere. 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 I'm doing Demar everywhere. So Beverly Hills private club, private show. You're doing the same jokes that you're doing at like the Comedy Union. Yes. You know why? Because they paid to see the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They paid to see the nigga. They knew who they was getting when they called. They don't want. They don't want me to. They don't want the 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 peppered down version. Mm. You know they call. You know they. It, it's like it's like you saying, oh, we we hired a, a NWA to do a, a private party and they're gonna take all the cuss words out for your party. No, you know you call. You want the cuss. You like yeah. give me the cuss words. Yeah. Give me the niggas. Give me the bitches. <laughs> I called you for the niggas and the bitches. Give me the niggas and the bitches. You know no 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 cut the niggas and the bitches out from my shit and I'm not gonna do it. And they love that. Shit. So you're not editing anything out. No, because you know, mo most of what I talk about has to do from me being me being poor, me growing up poor, me growing up in Compton, mm. and a lot of a lot of a lot of like the the Hollywood people they go, ah oh, man, that's you know he's always talking about the ghetto and poor. Nobody's gonna relate to that. Ninety nine percent of this country mm. relates to what I'm talking about. Ninety nine percent of this country goes, that's the realest shit I ever heard. Yeah. But yeah, they like, yeah. oh, you ghetto, man. You ghetto, you ghetto. <laughs> you from Compton, man. Yeah. yeah, it's a fight. One, the one percent calling me ghetto, they try to control everything. But the ninety nine love me. Yeah, I mean, as, as long as as the 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 masses love you. Right, right. You the, 90, the, not, the ninety nine love me. It's a, it's that one percent. They're like, ah, he's too ghetto. That's why I love that Jay Z uh, Magna Carta album. On that, on just on that level, like you can hear him talking about how. You know, high society kind of, you know, turn their nose up at them. Yeah. They turn their nose up at me, too. I be in the art museums. They be, <laughs> what is this nigga? What is this nigga? What is this nigga? <laughs> I have my comic college sweater on and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who let him in here? What, <laughs> it's what, a, what, do, you, what do you think about about bringer shows because you know you know la it's you know they say it's a very showcase town and this and that yada yada there's not a lot of money uh, especially for for comics in la so you know there's a lot of bringer shows yeah. that you do especially starting out so what's your take on doing bringer shows i don't i don't do bringer shows i never i don't, I don't think i ever done a bringer show you never done a bringer show no i never done a bringer show I'm, i live in los angeles i grew up in los angeles if i invite people out to a show they come in mm. They coming. Everybody asking me, oh, oh, when you doing a show? When you doing a show? I'm like, I'm not inviting my people out to a show with other shitty comics. When they put me on with with in the in the in the billboard with Dan Cook and and, and uh Chris Delia, I'll invite everybody out. I yeah. went to four or five high schools, but I'm not inviting everybody out to 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 uh call headline uh, open mic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, I'm not doing it. You know, I got, I got, I got, I got LA under my fingertip. I'm just not gonna. You know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be dope. You know. Mm. Okay. It's gotta okay. be dope. I don't do bringer shows. But now let me let me ask you this because you know there's there's a lot of social media right now that's playing into comedy. Whether it's Twitter, you know, YouTube, Vine, you know, Instagram, they're making quick little videos, whatever. How do you feel about these internet comedians? You know that are either a trying to do stand up, yeah. you know, versus the traditional stand up comedians. I think I, I think I started as an internet comedian. Yeah. Yeah, I started as an internet comedian. You, but you yeah. was online telling. Yeah, telling, I was. I was, I was writing my own material though. I get. I got a lot of. I got a lot of jokes from me stolen from uh, Twitter. But I started. I started telling jokes on the internet, and then I was like, yeah. Then I kind of like I got a little more curious as to what's going on on stage, and I mm. was like. All right, well, let's try it on. Let's try it on the stage and see what happens. So I used to come up reading my tweets and stuff, and I'm like, ah, oh, damn, some of these hidden, some of these ain't hidden. Mm. And then I just, you know, I went full blast into, you know, being, a, you know, a student of the craft now. But 
I started off as an internet comedian. I think I think you have to you got you can kind of get your like your 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 mouth wet for it first. You know that's the mm. that's like that that's like first first level. You know you start off internet comedian. Everybody start off as an internet comedian. It's true. Everybody start off as an internet comedian. You start you thought you was funny on MySpace. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> telling, <laughs> telling jokes. Yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh, y'all. Everybody thought they was funny on Facebook. Yeah, Liking everybody, this. Yeah, everybody's a fucking commenting. internet comedian. Everybody's an internet comedian. Everybody even fucking thinks they funny on Facebook. You know, but you know, then you got you know you got to be able to progress past it if you want to be you know if if you want to do if you want yeah, to yeah, do yeah yeah yeah. This is this is just the next step. You know, this is this. This is where the big boys come and compete to see who really the funniest. You know what right. I'm saying? There's and no the, delete yeah, yeah, but no yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? This is just where you know you come in and you gotta actually get into the to the octagon. <laughs> you gotta go get in the octagon. You know what I'm saying? You can't be you can't be internet banging. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be able to look me in my eye and tell me that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. While I'm in the back of the room, <laughs> pacing, 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 you know what I'm pacing back and forth. You know I'm getting the mic next. <laughs> What uh? What do you feel about because you you talked about people stealing stealing tweets? So you know, I mean, people steal steal tweets, people steal jokes. So what's your what's your take on uh? You know, people Carlos Mencia in uh, some of your material. If it's if if they steal it, then it's whack. I feel like if they can steal it, it's whack. If it's that if it's that broad, then mm -hmm. if, they, if it's that broad, it's whack. So you can have it anyway. Okay, but I'm like, a what, writer. If, yeah. what if what if someone takes it and they just like tweak it a little bit so now it kind of fits them? They can have it. If it's if it's not universal, it's not me. Mm. If it's not universal that somebody can say it and then get the same laugh, then it ain't my it ain't you it ain't me. That's just some universal stuff that anybody could have said. So if you have if you if you can find something that you can steal, then it's yours. Have it. Go ahead. Then it's in the stockpile of jokes. There's some stock people do stock jokes, yeah. but you know, and sometimes I might have an original joke that's, but it's still it's still considered a stock joke as mm. far as I'm concerned. So if you can steal it, then go ahead, cause you can't. You know what I'm saying? I I, I like to write for me, so you got a hard time stealing Demar Randy's stories. You got a hard time. You have a hard time trying to steal my shit. You can have all that butterfly BS. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I write every day. I'm I'm out grind. I got stories. I got three hours worth of shit. Okay. Okay. So listen, if you guys want to steal Demar Randy's jokes, steal come on jokes. and steal it. Come on and steal it. I steal mean, his, steal your favorite, jokes. yeah, but your favorite, your favorite comedian is paying me. So you, you know, you don't have to try to steal it. You can't compete with the cast that's paying me. So you still, you still not in the win. You know, I mean, you can just come hire me, and then I can make it better for you, and we both win. You know, there you go. and you got my full attention on you. Who uh who are some of the the comics that you are you're working with, or who some comics that you you want to work with? Ooh, who do I want to? I'll say who I'm working. I, I won't say who I'm working with, but I will say who I want to work with. Okay. Uh, I want to work with Jerry Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, kind of rough up his uh, <laughs> material a little bit, right? No, yeah, no. Maybe just bring that extra perspective for him. You know, it'll be a different. It'll be a different viewpoint where, you know, I can help him out with his observations. Well, because, you know, he did that, did, he did the thing with the uh, Wale. Wale. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. that. It was a good, it was a good bounce the, the two of them had in the recorders. And I think, I think me and Jerry could have some fun times, you know. Who else do I want to work with? Mason Pryor. I love him. Do you? I would like to write for him just to make him dope, just so we can watch. We can, I, I just, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> okay, look at him now, go. Bob. <laughs> speaking of speaking amazing because because you know you know uh uh brando you know like that that big thing you know about, about brando murphy not being eddie's son and, yeah. and this and that yada 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 what's what's your uh you know what's your take on that situation oh uh well brando is my dad i've been trying to get him to uh... <laughs> <laughs> i've been at his house like hey brando man why don't you tell people you want <laughs> Nah, I don't, I don't care, man. They, I mean, it must suck to wake up and look like Eddie Murphy. You know what I mean? Well, no, I mean because you know he he changed his last name and this and that. And so and because essentially he was getting booked on shows, yeah. because of the last name. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and then so you know, and it's like because I've I've seen him you know do bits a couple times live. Yeah, right. And so you know, not saying he's not funny, but not saying that he's funny. But there's things that he does that's like okay, like that's a la Eddie Murphy. Yeah, well, I heard he was trash. That's what everybody been telling me. He was yeah, trash. Yeah, I mean, okay, like it's like I'm not saying he's funny. I'm not saying that he's not funny, but you know, maybe stand up 
isn't the thing that he should really be working on right now. That's 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 what I'm gonna say. That was that was, <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 what you know. Maybe commercials. I don't know. Like, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I can, you know. Start start vining. I don't know, but just maybe stand up isn't his. You know. You never know, man. He might get it. I heard he had a good set the other day. It was you know most. You know that was the first time I heard he had a good set, but mm. you know. You mean, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. He might get it, man. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, but I try to stay positive for for my brothers. You know what I'm saying? He, right. It must suck to look like Eddie Murphy. You got to figure out something. You know, the first thing you're gonna do is try stand up. That you know, you look like him. At least see if you got it. Yeah, I mean, but Eddie doesn't even do stand up anymore, though. That's perfect. The lane wide open. <laughs> 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 well, go, ahead and, go ahead and slide in. Yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah. No, I mean, because you know, he uh, he he did that did that tour with uh, Mason. Yeah, you know, and they did the uh, the sons of the sons of uh, comedy, comedy tour. Yeah. yeah, you know. So I mean, man, you know, what whatever your your gimmick is, you know, everybody got a gimmick anyway. Everybody has they a got, gimmick, yeah, so. you know, if if he didn't, if now let's imagine if he tried to do stand up and didn't talk about even possibly looking like Eddie Murphy or him being his dad. Everybody like, man, why don't you talk about Eddie? What, how much you look like Eddie Murphy? How he could be your dad? You know, but if he like, oh, he's talking about it, and then they're like, no, 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 no. You're not. That's true, yeah. Like, you're not, you're not like Eddie. Catch 22. Yeah, you can't, he couldn't win with that face. You know, he didn't have no choice. He couldn't work out at McDonald's. What are you going to do? He can't go to McDonald's. Or, he can work at McDonald's. Hey, guys, they can like, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So what, like, what do you, what do you like, like to watch comedy wise? Like TV, movies, like what do you, like what really kind of gets your attention? Uh, comedy wise? Comedy wise, yeah. I listen to albums. Okay. No visuals. Cause that's how I learn how to write, you know. Mm. Learn for the write for the write for the brain, so that they, uh, you don't, you know. I want to win a Grammy. I'm trying to win, a, you know, a Grammy in comedy, and you can't do that with with an act house. That's true. Well, well, I mean, well, I don't know because, uh, I mean, now Bill, with a live record, with a recording, they cannot. See. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah you, you can't see. really. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be totally, you know, up here. So. You know, I want to win a Grammy, so I just I listen to a lot of comedy albums, Richard Pryor's, a lot of a lot of the white guys too. A lot of the old white guys, I listen mm. to them too, because you know I can learn a bit from everybody. Yeah, you know, I, I try to learn from everybody. You know, Jack Hennyman, uh, who else? Chaplin. Yeah, I watch yeah, a lot yeah. of those. You know, watch a lot of those old white dudes, and I watch. You know, I listen to some of Richard's stuff, the Party Records and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we Paul I mean Mooney. Yeah, yeah, and and because it's it's a lot of the classic stuff that you know really kind of brings back and really kind of gets gets these, these these audiences now because I feel like a lot of the guys today are like it's very it's very flashy and it's not it's not a lot of substance you know there's not like a lot of behind of what people are really saying you no. know what I mean? like it's 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 very fluffy yeah but everybody about to switch over when they see how see how Demar and Randy shit works they're gonna be like oh man I'm gonna need to start telling some stories about when I was poor for like two minutes yeah there you go huh so. Let me ask, ask you this, and then uh, we'll wrap up. Uh, but how has doing comedy changed your life? Uh, I think I think it made me closer with God. It helped me. It helped me. It helped me to be able to relax and trust mm -hmm. and trust Him and trust this whole process because it's been it's been going my way the whole time because I've been chilling out, you know. And comedy, comedy brought me closer to the guy. I say that. Well, sure. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So tell me, where uh, where can we see you live next, Demar? Uh, you can see me at Marty's every day. Every day, Marty's. Uh, rain, sleet, or snow. You can catch me there. And then, you know, you got to just check my, my Facebook and my Twitter. And, and I'll post is... it out. My, my Twitter is uh, Demar Randy Show. Okay. I got a personal, you know, I got two, two Twitters. One's kind of like... Just, you know, random thoughts, and then the other one's kind of more like do, just Damar, like, you know, like, it don't always have to be funny. So, Damar Randy at Twitter, and then Damar Randy Show, if you just want to laugh. Cool. Cool. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you for, thank you for coming out. Yeah, yeah! It was... Shout out to Compton. I'm so happy to be out here with you, man. That's just cool, man. I watched yes, all the other interviews, and I thought they were pretty cool, too. Cool, man. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for, for supporting. Thank you guys for, for watching again. Of course, you can find me all over the internet at the Nick Purdue. We'll see you next time. From producers Maria Manunas, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, 
Dario Kristen, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network. If you have questions or comments, tweet us at BHL Online or email us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. For more exclusive content, visit blackhollywoodlive.com. This has been a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in-depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.